Sensors are used today almost everywhere. Radar gun bounces microwaves off moving cars. A burglar alarm may use a photo sensor to detect when a beam of light has been broken or may use ultrasonic sound waves that bounces off moving objects. Speed detections, fire detections, pressure, temperature, vibrations, parking, and many more. Sensor is a device that responds to a physical stimulus such as heat, light, sound, pressure, magnetism, or a particular motion and transits a resulting impulse as for measurement or operating a control. To detect human gesture for my RPG game's character animation, I am using inertial measurement unit which is an electronic device that measures and reports body specific force, angular rate, and the orientation of the body. IMUs are typically used to maneuver aircraft and attitude and heading reference system, including unmanned aerial vehicles, among many others, and spacecraft, including satellites and landers. My goal is to identify a device's orientation in 3D space in terms of X, Y, and Z, or rotational angle, which respect of another reference plane such as art surface so that I can retarget the orientation data to control my human rigid body in Unreal Engine to create character animation. So far, I have explored accelerometer and gyroscope which are an integral part of IMU device. Accelerometer gives three axes of acceleration that includes of gravity and linear motion in terms of meter per second square. And gyroscope provides three axes of rotational speed in terms of radian per second. Both accelerometer and gyroscope have some limitations. Due to that, the need of combining both the sensors come in play. Hence, my today's topic is about sensor fusion. What it is and how does it work? If you have not watched the previous video on accelerometer and gyroscope, please check the description below. You can also visit my Patreon site to read the complete paper. So, without any further delay, let's deep dive into it now. If you are new to this channel, please consider to give a like and subscribe that means a lot to me an autonomous system is one that can achieve a given set of goals in a changing environment gathering information about the environment and working for an extended period without human control or intervention sensor fusion is an integral part of the design of an autonomous systems like self-driving cars or drone autopilot of aircraft or rocket or internet of things say earthquake tracking storm detections parking assist navigation systems and so on. At high level, a sensor fusion is combining two or more data sources in a way that provides better understanding of the system in terms of consistency, accuracy, dependability and robustness. In short, trustworthy. The data is generated by the sensor by interacting with the physical world provides an estimation of truth. Say an accelerometer which provides the acceleration data by measuring the change in velocity continuously and consistently over a period of time. Such estimations are sometimes a mathematical model, but what to do with the data and how this data will be used we will see in a while. A whole process to define an autonomous system is segmented in four parts. Sense, perceive, plan and act. Sense the behavioral change of the physical world and report in form of data. Interpret or perceive the data to an understandable form. Once the data is understood, system needs to plan the next step or course of action. Calculate the best action to follow the suggested path. And this process continues. Say a self-driven car is moving in a specific lane. The sensors in the car is to sense the nearby obstructions, which is continuously gathering data in terms of nearby objects. Once the object is sensed, the sensor is continuously tracking the object by means of distance, speed, direction, and so on. Gathering those data doesn't make any sense and hence perseverance comes to play to determine what the object is. Is it a pillar or a person or an animal? Based on the gathered data in terms of distance, directions, and speed, system can determine the movability. If the object is not static, then based on the data system determine in which direction the object is moving and where it will be in the future. Based on such estimation, alarm system gets activated to correct the course of action of the car by planning the next step. Say apply brake or change the lane. 
Action is primarily performed by the controller in the control system. In a nutshell, sensor generates the data by sensing which is used to determine the possibilities. By using the possibilities, the next path is determined and performed. This process is performed by an autonomous system by using sensors and controllers. A sensor performs two types of activities, self-awareness and situational awareness, to determine the next path in planning stage. Sometimes, one sensor data is not enough to determine the complete awareness and hence multiple sensors either of similar type or different variant are combined to evaluate the awareness so that the plan is accurate to act on. Such thing is called sensor fusion. Ideally, sensor fusion is straddle senses and perceived activities as it is responsible to gather complete awareness of the physical environment. It is a process of taking multiple sensor measurements and combining them and mixing in additional information for mathematical models with the goal of having a better understanding of the physical world with which the system can use to plan and act. There are five advantages of using sensor fusion. Increase the quality of data by reducing the noise or deviations. Lowering the uncertainty, increase the reliability, predict the future state in advance, and finally increase the awareness of the coverage area. Let's look at each of the advantages now. An accelerometer gives the data about acceleration due to gravity. Ideally, it should be 9.81 meter per second square, which will be constant at a particular place, say the sensor is placed in a table. Moving the accelerometer or shake the table, accelerometer will read the vibration, which impacts the angle measurement. Or an external interference like bringing a magnet closer to the accelerometer will create the noise. Combining two accelerometers and averaging out the output will help us to reduce the noise. If the noise isn't correlated across, then fusing the sensors together will give us the combined noise by factor of the square root of the number of sensors. Similar way, four or more sensors will reduce the overall noise by 50% or less. Sometime with a single sensor, various outputs are used to average out the noise by trusting one of the reading over another, say like low pass filter, which I already have explored in the previous episode, link there in the description below. Although the output is clean, but it's laggy and it doesn't give the complete truth. We can also reduce the noise by combining two or more different type of sensors, say gyroscope. We have already seen some of the noise in accelerometer are not detected in gyroscope measurement. Here sensor fusion help to combining and correlate both gyroscope and accelerometer data to eliminate the noise. Although there are limitations in both the sensor output, bringing third sensor like magnetometer might help to cover the gap to some extent. The second advantage is to lowering uncertainty. Say a LiDAR sensor is installed to a self-driven car to detect and to measure the obstruction ahead of the car. If it senses the obstruction, then there could be two possible options the car controller can follow. Either apply brake or change the lane. Without knowing the surroundings, choosing any of the option might be very dangerous. To eliminate the uncertainty of the surroundings, if another sensor plays in the back and both sides of the car, then choosing one of the options will increase the reliability of the decision. All these sensors are fused together to evaluate the environmental situation at the same time, so that the controller follow the instruction to act upon. These sensors could be same type or different types depending upon the requirement. In some situation, camera sensors are also fused together with the LiDAR to detect the object type. Either the obstruction is due to another vehicle or a pillar or a wall. The third advantage is to increase the reliability. Say we have two identical sensors fused together to average out the noise. In this case, either sensors can be used as redundant. If one fails, another will be active. Although we lose the quality of the sensor output in case of failure, but we do not lose the whole measurement. More sensors in the mix increases the accuracy and redundancy by averaging out or by voting one of the output. 
For example, parking assist sensors of a vehicle. Normally, there are four similar sensors are installed at the back side. While reversing the car, all the sensors will start sensing the obstacle, but one of the sensor will accurately tell where is the obstacle. Nominating and voting one of the sensor by the nature of the output improves the perseverance of the situation. A pitot tube, also known as pitot probe, is a flow measurement device used to measure fluid flow velocity. It is widely used to determine the airspeed of an aircraft, water speed of a boat, and to measure liquid, air, and gas flow velocity in certain industrial applications. More pitot tubes help improving redundancy along with approximating the speed accuracy. However, if the failure mode is similar for all the sensor, then the failure will apply to all the sensor at the same time. For example, freezing rain will cause all the pitot tubes to freeze up and we lose the complete speed measurement system. In this case, different type of sensors are used to supplement like GPS to find the ground speed or atmosphere wind models. Combining all types of sensors using sensor fusion does improve the reliability and accuracy. However, primary sensor failure reduces the quality. But the close approximate data coming out of secondary sensor can supplement the situation for some time till the primary is recovered. Such things are also considered as safety features in some scenario like aircraft. The fourth advantage is to predict the future state in advance or estimate the unmeasured state. Please note, unmeasured doesn't always mean unmeasurable. Let's take an example of marine navigation system. A radar system is tracking boats in the ocean by sending radio signals, which is not only measuring the position of the boat, but also measuring the movement, direction, along with the speed of the boat. Analyzing the data coming out of the radar, one can predict where the boat will be in the future. However, the predictions are continuous and are being corrected in the next measurement again and again. If the radar finds another boat is on the way using the same prediction model and combining the predictions, possibilities of collisions are detected and boats course of actions are corrected in advance. In case of unmeasurable situation like a big boat in between a small boat and the radar causes the interference, in such case the predictive model is used to continue the prediction till the interference is overcome. Such prediction reliability is not long term. The final benefit is to increase the coverage area. One particular type or combination of different types of sensors gives an estimate of environment in a particular direction. If such model is applied in several directions, then the coverage area increases. For example, autopilot vehicle parking or valet parking. In such case, a 360 degree view of the environment detection is done based on multiple sensor perseverance relative to the vehicle. The algorithm the algorithm that pulls off all the sensors together into one coherent system is still a form of sensor fusion. A lot of different ways sensor fusions are done. Although the methods are not necessarily a common algorithm or even have the same design objectives, but the goal or the purpose of the sensor fusion is same, which is to improve the measurement quality, reliability and coverage, as well as to estimate the states that are not measured directly. For my motion capture suit, I need the sensor fusion to determine the sensor orientation in 3D space relative to the other reference frame like other sensor or art surface. So far, I have got the approximate orientation based on the accelerometer and gyroscope data individually. Although this sensor follows individual algorithm to determine the orientation, but individual output are not reliable in some scenarios or in long term. Therefore, I need to apply the sensor fusion to eliminate the error and get the reliable and consistent outcome. Let's look at how can I use sensor fusion to estimate object orientation. Orientation by means of attitude indicator like pitch and roll in 2D plane in terms of X and Y axis angle approximation or heading indicator in terms of magnetic direction with reference to earth surface. Finally, turn coordinator for yaw or Z axis angle evaluation. It's all about the same thing. I want to figure out which way the object is facing relative to some reference. That is why the sensor fusion algorithm is also 
also known as an attitude and heading reference system in short ahrs such system is not limited to earth surface as reference reference system could be stars or a satellite or other planets as well think about a rocket which is going to space with gyro i am taking the measurements of angular velocity rate to determine the delta angle based on sample time between two measurements and using the angle as a reference angle next angle measurement is done by repeating this process for next sample time and one after another i have determined the orientation of the device over time this process is also known as dead reckoning i have created a detailed video on that link is there in the description below there are several downsides of the process dead reckoning one of them is we need to know the initial orientation of the device as the previous measurement is used to determine the next one any sort of high frequency noise does corrupt the whole measurements due to earth's rotation gyroscope's horizon reference frame is also drifts over time and hence gyro measurement cannot be used for a longer term such noise can be overcome by using low pass filter which i already have applied on accelerometer output Although the filter smoothens out the noise a bit but the result drifts away from the true position and the reality. On the other hand, accelerometer produces absolute measurement based on the linear acceleration, but measurement produces corrupted outcome due to linear motion. Let's try to combine these two sensors outcomes such a way that emphasize each of their strength and minimize their weaknesses. There are number of sensor fusion algorithm that we can use like complementary filter kalman filter or more sophisticated filters like majwik or mahoney filters but at the core every filter tries to do the same thing initialize the attitude alignment either by setting it up manually or deriving it by extracting some samples to start with and then correct the corruptions or bias problem using the base alignment I still haven't used magnetometer so my fusion algorithm will only be using accelerometer and gyroscope at this moment at high level to blend these two sensors outcome i have a slider whose one side is accelerometer and other side will be gyroscope whichever way i place the slider my trust will be on that sensor if i place the slider on gyroscope then i will fully trust the gyroscope outcome and the same way i will trust accelerometer outcome only if the slider i placed on accelerometer side if the slider is placed in the middle then i trust both the sensor same amount therefore the algorithm would be based on the slider's location a percentage of trust on either side will be determined which will be applied to take a portion of one sensor and add it to the complementary portion of other sensor the trust percentage based on the slider could be either manual or programmatically for complementary filter it is manual that means we decide which sensor we trust more at the beginning trusting gyro outcome over accelerometer we are emphasizing more on smoothness and quick updates and complementing the accelerometer outcome with gyro to eliminate the accelerometer noise for kalman filter such trust level is calculated continuously and the slider is called kalman gain or kalman loss which is adjusted with one sensor over another the trust percentage are calculated again and again continuously so that the accuracy is intact even in if the gyro picks up the biasness mahoney and majwik extended kalman filter are more sophisticated model but works on the same strategy in a nutshell the sensor fusion is a model to determine the trust percentage and averaging the two or more sensors outcome based on how much trust we have in each of them till i explore magnetometer i will start working on complementary filter sensor fusion to start with in the next episode i will work on the complementary filter to fuse accelerometer and gyroscope output and evaluate the accuracy as you know i am also learning and my resources are either google suggested research paper or youtube suggested video on the topic based on the time spent on the learning last few weeks i have made this video to demonstrate my learning i might be wrong in some case and not able to explain it properly if you could point out those problem it will be a great help so please comment and help me to rectify that on that note i am finishing this video here i hope you like the progress and the strategy of the development 
please stay tuned for such interesting topic and the solution till then stay safe and take care thank you for watching